Hey what's up guys and welcome in this new tutorial where I'm gonna show you the best mastering compression settings for Tech House. So we're gonna cover different techniques from glue compression to transparent compression and much more and I'm gonna try to give you free alternatives also to the plugins that we are using so that everyone can access these techniques. So before starting with the tutorial the ProMaster that we have here is from one of the construction kits of our pack Fiesta Volume 2 which is a Terrace Tech House collection of of loops, one shots, construction keys and much more that you can check out from the link in the description below. So let's have a listen to the ProMaster first. At the moment on the mastering chain we only have this Pro L2 with a bit of gain and we're gonna start right with the first technique which is a really basic glue mix example. So when you're trying to glue in your mix you basically want to make your track even and avoid loud peaks. The way we can do that is by setting a medium to fast tack time. like this but the real trick here is to set the release time which is in time with the bpm of your song right now we are at 128 bpm so what you have to do is to divide 60,000 by the bpm so 128 and we're gonna get 468 which equals to quarter of a note then we're gonna multiply that by 4 and we're gonna have 1872 and we're gonna remove the release time which is 5 milliseconds. So basically we're gonna get release around here. So very slow release in order to affect a lot of the transient of the track. So something like this. In terms of compression here 1 to 2 dB is good. You can hear when we go on and off how the compression is really gluing the mix and making it much more consistent and this is really helpful for tech house tracks when you have a lot of percussions or a lot of sounds that can change the way the transients are working. Then we are gonna move on into some more transparent mastering compression and for this technique we are gonna use the Ableton standard compressor. Also for the previous technique you can use the compressor and basically the most important thing here is to select RMS. In this way the compressor will not work on the peaks but on the average loudness of the track and this will give a more transparent compression to the mix because you are not working on the single peaks but on the average loudness of your premaster. However this can cause some problems because maybe some of the louder peaks will go through and will not be able to be detected by the compressor. So you want to use this technique when you already have a very consistent mix without too many transients that stick out. In terms of the setting we are looking at an attack below 10 milliseconds so we can go something like 9.5 and for the release below 50 milliseconds. You don't want to go too short here because otherwise you will start distorting the sound and we are looking at around 1.5 to 2 dB of compression. So something like this. Let's see the difference between peak and RMS. You can see that when we switch to peak the compressor is much more aggressive because it's focusing on the single peaks and not on the average loudness of the track. So the next compression settings or technique is gonna be reproducing the compression that naturally occurs in our ears. So for this we're gonna use a multiband compression. I'm using the Ozone Dynamics but you can use the standard Ableton compressor and basically what happens in our ears is that all the frequencies below 1000 
thousand hertz get automatically compressed from 1 to 20 dB when they are too loud. It's proven also that we react to this compression after 35 to 40 milliseconds and the compression lasts 150 milliseconds. So basically what we're going to do is going to be simply reproducing this compression inside of the multiband compressor that we have here. So we're going to set the attack at around 35 and a release of 150. You want to go with a soft knee and we're going to compress around 1.5 to 2 dBs. So this can be a useful trick that can help you in some situation, especially when you have a much louder uh, low end. So you can easily reproduce how your will react to it with this technique. Then we can move on into parallel compression and mastering. So this one can be done with the standard Ableton glue compressor or with the Prosecu like this. We're going to use the glue compressor in this case because I think it's much easier to use and uh, this also really simple technique so we're gonna go with medium to fast attack let's set the release to automatic and we're gonna compress around 10 to 15 even up to 20 db and then we're gonna mix the dry with the wet signal so let's do this So yeah, with this technique, basically adding a bit more power to the track and we are using the compressor in a very extreme way. So you have to be careful with the dry and wet. Obviously, you can use this technique also on other parts of your song, like on your drums or on your bass line, for example. It can be used really subtly in your mastering channel as well, even if it can cause some damages if it's used too much. And the final one is the expansion plus compression trick. For this one, we're going to use the Pro-G, which is actually a gate and a pro -C2. So here you can uh, still use the Ableton standard compressor for this one, but uh, we're going to go with the, the fab filter ones. So really easily, we're going to deactivate the pro -C2, and in the Pro-G, we're going to go for upward and uh, we are going to expand a really tiny amount. So as for the settings of attack and release, you can see that we are going with some more or less neutral settings. So 10 milliseconds of attack and around 50 milliseconds of release. We're going to copy that in the procedure as well later on. But now let's find the sweet spot for the expansion. So something like this, uh, as you saw at the beginning of the processing, we were at around minus 7 dB and now we are at around minus 6 dB. So we're getting uh, 1 dB of expansion here and uh, we are going to counter that with 1 dB of compression. Then uh, we will see if uh, it's going to be better to have the compressor first uh, and the expansion later or vice versa like we have right now. But let's apply the same settings, 10 milliseconds of attack, 50 milliseconds of release. and 1db in game reduction. So let's try and switch these two.
So here it really depends on how the track is looking. So if you want a bit more power and then you want to control it, you can do expansion first, compression later. Or if you want to control the dynamics of your track first and then boost it even higher, you can do compression first and then expansion later. I think that the important thing either way is to have the compression right after it so that you can finalize your master after this processing. So yeah, and that's basically all for this tutorial on the best compression settings for Tech House. Don't forget to check out Fiesta Volume 2 from the link in the description below. Let us know what tutorials would you like to see next and I'll see you soon. Bye!